This little uh, tutorial is for um, Carson and Maddie, some of my fans who have requested um, me to show you all how to draw Squirtle, a Pokemon character. Um, so let's get started and I hope you all enjoy. The first thing you need to decide is which way to orient or turn your paper. If what you're drawing is tall, you may want to turn your paper portrait, or as I tell my little kids, hamburger, because hamburgers are taller since you're stacking things on top of each other. If your character is wide, you need to turn your paper this way so you don't run out of room. Um, for Squirtle, it really doesn't matter because when I look at Squirtle, the, the picture we're going to draw, Squirtle to me as an overall shape looks like an X or it looks like he would fit in a square, so it really doesn't matter. Again, some people like to work from the legs up. I prefer to draw um, from the head down. So. The first thing, well the second thing, other than um, orienting or turning your paper, the second thing I would say is figure out the proportions. Um, use your uh, pencil tip and your thumb to measure how, um, how big Squirtle is. When I look at Squirtle, half, if not more, of his, his body is actually the head. Now we don't want to draw too, um, we don't want to start too high on our paper because then we may run out of room for arms. And we don't want to start in the middle because then you'll run out of room for legs. So the first thing I like to do is kind of grid off my paper. So if I'm going to start here, I want to end up here. And remember I said Squirtle, over half of him is head. So if you take this and kind of divide it in half this will let you know how big his head is let's get started on Squirtle's head so the first thing I see when I look at Squirtle is his huge head which looks like an almost like a circle but it's slightly irregular so I would lean more towards an oval um, so the first thing I'm going to draw when it comes to Squirtle is his head. And if it's too much like an oval, go back and make it more circular. And I love these erasers, the retractable kind. Gum erasers work well. I just prefer these little erasers. They work really well as far as not having a bunch of residue. Alright, so once you draw your oval or your circle, remember this may not be the shape you end up with. This is just saying, hey, this is where his head is going to be. And really, I don't know if Squirtle's a male or female, so I really don't know. Um, so you can do the next step, which is mouth or eyes. Um, and I'm thinking I'd rather start with the mouth because if I don't position the mouth correctly, then the eyes will look off. So let's start with the mouth. The mouth is pretty simple. I'm going to start with a curved line that's parallel to this bottom line right here. And Squirtle has a pretty big mouth. I also noticed that the left side is higher than the right side. So if you drew an imaginary line across, this uh, side of the mouth should be lower. So that's good. If you want to tilt your paper a little bit now so that the ends are horizontal, and a good way to judge that is the edge of your table. In the middle of his mouth or her mouth dips down a little bit. That's why I turned it. So you're going to go to the right. Notice how you curve up a little bit on the end. And then on the other side you're going to go up, around, down, and curve up. And then inside the mouth you see the tongue. 
and you don't want to start off this dark. I've uh, had people tell me that they can't see my lines, so I'm using a 6B pencil, which is very dark. You don't even have to press down very hard to get dark lines. The next thing I'm going to do is work up. So I see two little lines for the nostril. The eyes are next. The eyes start, it looks like where this line is. And I'm just going to draw some light lines. So we're going to start by drawing a slightly straight line. We're going to go up to maybe right here. Up, around, down. And I've noticed that it should flare out more at the top. Like that. So again, mistakes are not bad. You should always look at what you're drawing as well as what you're drawing. So inside the eye, I see a curve line, and then the white oval where the light is reflecting off of the eye, and then another curve line. And this is the part that would be dark. And if you have crayons, you would color this black. This bottom part is brown. Eyebrow. On the other side, we're going to draw a little line right here, a curved line. Remember, we're going to flare out at the top. Basically, this part here should be wider than this part. And the top of the eye should be higher up than this eye. So maybe somewhere like right here. So flare out and then down. And what I mean by flaring out is this part is wider, see how I'm using my pencil to measure, than this part at the bottom. The inside of the eye, the iris and the pupil. Curve line and oval. And I can tell I have something under my paper. All right. I've noticed that this should be a little bit bigger or closer to the edge just like that is. It's making him look a little cross-eyed. A lot of times attention to detail will make or break a drawing. And then the other eyebrow. It's kind of like a comma or a curve line. And this part would be dark. A lot of times I don't like to shade until the very end because if I shade like I'm doing now as I'm dragging my finger I notice that I have smudge marks. And here's a little tip. If you don't like smudge marks and constantly erasing things take whatever you have, another piece of paper, a sticky note and put your um, pinky finger on there and then just reposition it and rest your finger on this or rest your hand on this and it'll keep you from having dirty fingers or dirty knuckles as I always have um, lead here. Alright, the next thing, you could start with a couple of things, the, the shell or the arms. I'm going to go down and um, start with the shell before I start the arms. I'm going to start on the right side. I'm going to come down and I'm not going to come all the way down here. This is where, if you extend this line, this is where the feet or the toes will be. So if you extend this line over like that, the legs and toes will be here. This is not where the bottom of the shell will be. The bottom of the shell 
should actually be a little bit higher so like right here and Squirtle's head remember takes up a majority of the body so the shell looks like it starts where the corner of the mouth is here comes down around and it looks like it meets the left leg where the other corner of the mouth is so somewhere here and I'm imagining a line coming down and if we need to extend that later fine I'm not really worried about it right now as you can see the sticky note kind of sticks to my hand which is kind of interesting the arm let's start with the right arm uh, sometimes I go clockwise sometimes I go counterclockwise when I draw alright the arm looks like it starts close to the top of the eye and I notice I need to extend this top part here because there should be a greater distance so what I may do is come up a little higher and then down that looks a little bit better so it's constantly looking at how things relate to other objects remember what you draw may or may not have to change as you progress or develop your drawing alright so the arm starts close to the top of the right eye and it curves up and then it's almost like a zigzag line but not pointy so it's gonna look more like this okay don't make it super pointy now it is pointy in some areas but not every area so we're gonna curve up this finger is a little pointy the next one is more rounded and then the last one curves like that and then this arm comes to right about here so we're going to draw almost like a wavy line the leg so when I look at the leg I see an oval and then another oval for the uh, feet um, some people don't draw light marks first I do but there are lots of different techniques you can use um, so I'm gonna show you how I look at things I look at things and I try to notice underlying shapes for me it's just how my mind works now this looks nothing like the finished product so what I'm gonna do is go back and the way I draw tends to lead to a lot of erasing I'm gonna make this line dark and this line dark and erase this part in the middle then the foot again three toes like three fingers the foot starts a little bit lower than the middle comes out and the middle toe is longer and then you're gonna come out and then in and erase lines you don't want now on a lot of YouTube tutorials they just show you how to draw the lines and I'll show you with the other leg and if you notice that some toes are too big just go back and erase and remember it helps a lot if you don't press down hard you don't want dark lines until you're done typically or ideally alright so the space between legs is a little bit wider so I'm gonna extend this out erase this and before I work on the leg and the arm I'm actually going to retrace my steps and go back to the head <clears throat> and I'm going to draw parts of the shell and parts of the arm 
I don't know why, I can't tell you why, but I like to work top down. And so instead of continuing on this side, I always backtrack back to the head. The arm, I'm not going to worry about yet, but I'm going to worry. I'm actually going to start with, um, I guess, the armpit or where the shell meets the arm. Um, that looks like it starts where the corner of the mouth is on the bottom edge of the head. And you're going to draw almost like the letter J. And it should come down almost even with the chin. So again, I've gone down a little too far. So modify and adjust, make it shorter, like so. And remember, it's easier if you don't use dark pencils. All right, now let's start with the left arm. And the left arm looks different from all the other appendages because you only see two fingers and then the thumb. The thumb is actually going to be inside the arm. So I'm going to start close to where the bottom of the eye is. Come up. And the thing you may want to do is measure how long this arm is to see how long this arm will be. And I'm looking at my picture and the two arms are similar in length. This arm is slightly longer, so what I like to do is measure. So this arm is this long. This arm will be a little bit longer, so like right here. All right. This arm has two fingers. And then it comes down, and it's wide at the base. And then inside that, you'll draw your thumb. So we still have one, two, three fingers, but they don't um, align like these other fingers and toes do. All right. Also, you see the top part of the shell curve down here the bottom part of the shell comes down around like this and then we're going to go from here to here using a curved line and make this edge kind of pointy see how that's a point and then curve like so let's finish this leg before we fill in this little area. So I want this leg to come out past the arm. So if I drew a horizontal line down from the arm, I want this leg to come out a little bit farther. So you can use your hands, your fingers, or pencil mark to kind of roughly give you an idea that you're going to come out at least this far. Also, you're going to come down this low, so your your leg will come out like this. So your leg will actually be somewhere in here. And I don't know if you can see the light lines. I hate drawing dark at first, but like I said, I, I'm trying to draw darker so you all can see the lines a little bit better. So you can do one of two things. You can start with the toes and then go back to the body. You can go from the body to the toes. Since I'm already over here, I'll just draw my toes. Remember, it kind of looks like a zigzag line. Now, as you get closer to the, to the body, the leg is going to expand or get larger. So you're going to come out like so. See how it curves up? And on the other side, you're going to curve out like so. Almost there. We could start with this area, or we could just finish the shell up. The shell, slightly off center, so not exactly in the middle, but a little bit over to this side. 
you're going to draw a diagonal line leave a little bit of space down here diagonal line uh, diagonal line like so you're going to draw a curve line that goes from arm to arm so I'm gonna go from here to here and I'm going to almost go to the chin so let me make this line a little bit darker so you're going to curve come almost to the chin curve up like that let me trace the head a little bit darker so we're not confused We're going to draw a triangle on the left and the right, somewhere here. This is where our next line will be. Diagonal line, diagonal line, and this line should actually be a little bit lower. That's okay. We don't have to make it exactly like the artist drew it. Diagonal, diagonal. And then make this line a little bit darker. And remember any stray lines, just erase any marks that you may have made with your hand. And my knuckles fairly clean. I'm using this sticky note. Alright, the shell. Let's finish the shell and then the tail and then we're done. The shell, we're going to use a curve line to go up to the arm, curve line, and it looks like inside the shell there's another curve line. Done with the shell. The tail, the tail comes up to slightly where the thumb is, somewhere here, and then inside the tail on the outer edge we see almost a spiral line we don't use spirals very often in art so we're going to start here we're going to curve up come around like that so let's make it darker And then we're going to curve back to the body. And actually the tail is a little bit wider, but that's all right. I'm pretty content with what I've got. Now once you have all this, I like to go back and do shading, add details. You may want to add color, which is fine. And speaking of color, don't be afraid to use more than one color in one area. For example, if you don't have that particular kind of uh, aqua or teal, use green and blue together and go over that with white uh, if you don't have that particular yellow because it's an odd shade of yellow it's like a mustard yellow then don't be afraid to mix colors together to get this Hate, hate lines that don't erase all the way. And that's Squirtle.